Welcome back to EVE 101. The previous two videos covered the in-game UI when it came to players interacting with EVE Online. This episode is no different, but focuses more on what is seen while flying a starship. To start, we'll look at the various UI windows in a clockwise rotation. When a player locks onto another ship, station, or object in space, they will see the target area appear in the default location at the top right of the screen. There are three rings of information relating to the target. These are the health states of the target's shields, armor, and hull. Inside of these rings is the target's icon. Below this information is the name of the target and the distance it is from the player's ship. You may notice certain brackets and parentheses next to the target's name. These refer to the Corporation and Alliance ticker of the target, to help players determine that if it is in fact the right target they want to interact with. Beneath all of this, icons will appear. These refer to what sort of offensive modules a player's ship is applying to the selected target. These icons will also include support modules such as shield and armor repairers. To the right of the locked target's location is the selected item window. This is where players can interact with the selected target, such as docking at a station, warping to a fleet member, or orbiting a combat target. Below that is the overview panel. This window is a complete listing of everything that is in the immediate area around a player's ship. It is also a great tool to provide accurate and relevant information to help maximize a player's ability to assess their current environment. A player will likely use the overview window as an easy way to lock on a desired target, such as a specific enemy or NPC unit. The window is also customizable, making it so players can click on a tab to see only other player ships, celestial bodies, or a variety of other configurations. These configurations can be saved in what is called an overview pack, and are regularly shared amongst players to make their lives easier. The ship control panel resides in the bottom and middle of the screen. It's a multi-purpose panel that helps control the various aspects of a player's starship. Primarily, the main information about the player's ship comes in the form of a circular panel. The outermost ring, which shows a series of small varying color icons, is what is called the compass. This helps display where the cosmic anomalies found within the system, as well as a player's bookmarked locations are in relation to the player's ship. The next ring series of information comes in the form of three rings in the top half of the center console. These display the ship's health. The outermost ring displays the shield health, the middle ring displays the armor health, and the innermost ring represents the hull integrity. Moving more inward is the module overheat display. These three small windows show the heat status of the three module types we discussed previously. The innermost circle displays the ship capacitor state, which we liken to a ship battery. Beneath the capacitor state is the ship's speedometer. To the left and the right of the panel are additional items a player will need to use. To the right of the center panel are three rows of icons. These icons all represent the different modules the player fit to their active ship. The topmost row is, by default, the high slot modules. The middle row displays the mid slot modules, with the bottom row displaying the low slot modules. If a module can be toggled between active and inactive, clicking on it will start a green glowing light around it to indicate that it is actively using capacitor. Passive modules, however, don't need to be activated. On the active modules, there is also a small bar at the top center of the icon. Clicking this will make the module activate its overload function, as well as show us how much heat damage it has taken when hovered over with the mouse. To the left of the ship control panel are the various options that are universal for all ships to do. The autopilot function will automatically warp a ship and jump through stargates along a planned route. The camera options pertain to adjusting how the camera tracks your ship and at what angle it will track at. The scanner button will allow a player to choose which of the three scanner types they want to use. These are the directional scanner, which every ship has and can be used to scout for any objects of interest within a certain radius. The probe scanner window, which is used with the probe scanner module to track down items of interest such as enemy ships, wormholes, and anomalies. The moon scanner window allows the player to scan down what sorts of resources that can be extracted from a particular moon. The cargo hold is, much like the option from the Neocom menu, a way to see what items are in the ship's hangar. The tactical overview button displays a grid surrounding the player's ship. This will help show what the ship's active module range is, as well as the visual distance between a player's ship and their target. The final button on the ship control panel is the safety button. In EVE, there are two levels of illegal behavior, suspect and criminal. We'll talk more about these when discussing the Crime Watch timers, but it's important to know that a player can't just go straight into doing these sorts of nefarious acts. The safety system is designed to make sure a player knows that what they want to do will be deemed illegal by the NPC police in high security and low security systems. The safety system has three states, enabled, partially disabled, and disabled. When enabled, a player cannot commit any kind of illegal activity. 
If the safety setting is set to partially disabled, a player can commit acts that will get them a suspect flag, but not those that would get them a criminal flag. While the safety settings are disabled, a player can do anything they like, up to and including criminal acts. Most players who partake in PvP usually have their safety settings set to disabled. If a ship has drones in its drone bay, then a window will appear displaying the information related to their drones. This is where a player can track the health of, and deployment of, their drones from their ship. We already addressed the Neocom menu, which is on the far left hand of the screen. So we will move on to the various information a player can find at the top left. This is where a fair amount of the ancillary information is displayed. First we'll discuss the Crime Watch timers. Crime Watch is a system which tracks a player's activity and aggression timers. There are many types of timers ranging from PvE activity to PvP. Hovering a mouse over any of these flags will show the amount of time left and the cause of the flag. These different flags also help determine how other players and NPCs will interact with the player. For example, if a player is in either a high security or low security space and has a criminal flag, then other players can attack them without the NPC police, called Concord, intervening. Having a criminal timer in a high security system will also cause the NPC police to attack the player. But in low security systems, they will not engage with them with the exception of on that gate guns on stargates and stations. In addition to these is the concept of a session change timer. Every time a player character's location is modified, such as when they undock from a station, they will be given a short session change timer. This timer prevents from switching from one location to another quickly. This timer also does not begin when a player uses their ship to warp to a location, but will appear if they jump through a stargate. The session change timer will appear below where the crime watch timers are displayed, just next to the current system location name. The system location name displays several key pieces of information for the player. Firstly, there is the name of the current system the player is in. These can be named systems, such as the systems found in high security and low security space, or a jumbling of letters and numbers, such as those found in zero security space or in wormholes. To the right of the current system name is the system security status. In part two of this video series, we briefly touched on what system security status is. In general, this helps determine what sort of PVP rules exist in that system. In high security status systems, which are 0.5 to 1.0, PvP is more restricted. In low security status systems, rated 0.1 to 0.4, PvP is less restricted, but still has boundaries. In zero security space systems, called NullSec due to the 0.0 rating, PvP is more freeform. Wormholes follow the same sort of PvP rules as NullSec, with some minor differences, which we'll talk about later. When it comes to PvE mechanics, such as doing mining or completing missions, the lower the security status, the more profitable it can be, though this varies depending on the gameplay being done. After the name and system status is the constellation and region that the system is located in. This isn't as necessary to know, but can be useful when navigating the map. Underneath this information is where the closest celestial object is to the player. These can be a specific station, planet, moon, asteroid belt, or even a stargate. Knowing this can help players relay information to other members of their fleet if the need arises. A player can also set up what is called the Autopilot Route. This is a series of systems displayed underneath the system information that show the current location, the destination, and all the systems a player would go through to get there. Each system along the displayed route also show their security status. The darker red a system is, the closer to 0.0, .0 security status it will be. If a system is shown to be closer to green, that means it's closer to being a high security system on the system security status scale. Players can use Autopilot menu to customize their route by avoiding specific systems, taking the shortest amount of gate jumps, and more. If you're a pilot looking to enter wormholes though, just know that it is not possible to autopilot amongst the various wormholes generated in the game. Underneath that row will be additional information that appears when applicable. This could be current missions a player has accepted, the status of the system if it's part of faction warfare, or if the system is currently experiencing an incursion, it will display the status of that event. These are not always displayed in every single system, and they can vary between locations. Finally, the center of the screen is where a player can see what sort of damage they are dealing as well as receiving. This can be adjusted through the logs and message window found in the Neocom to be positioned in a more desirable location. That's it for this video on the in-game UI. For more tutorials and guides, visit eve101.com, and for additional analysis and insight into eve, visit crossingzebras.com.